Hi guys, so uh, here's a quick demonstration of BreCS Notify the LCD version and in the not too distant future I'll also do a video on the tablet version. So the idea behind this is to get feedback and notifications uh, when you pass through the turnstile. This, these are notifications for both access granted, just to say your name and the date and the time in which you entered or if you are due to expire it will tell you how many days you've got left etc and also access denied so <clears throat> if the IEVO fingerprint reads your finger successfully because you are valid in the respect of the biometrics um, the access control side of things um, you, you could be a barred user you could have expired you could be out of hours so you'll get all that sort of notifications uh, sent to you the screen that you're seeing where it says BreCS notify biometric entry that can be changed to any custom message that you want so that can be displayed on screen and that along with the IP address settings are all stored on an SD card uh, in the device itself so if there is a power failure or a power cycle uh, all of those details will be remembered also in the event that you accidentally set an IP address that you just can't navigate to or you're moving one a device from one site to another and you can't remember what that IP address is <clears throat> you can push and hold a, a default load defaults button and that will just default the IP address back to the uh, factory set settings that are in the firmware so that covers that um, so what I've got is both a finger and a prox token both registered to the same person I is in me so if I present my finger at the moment access will be granted both biometric and access control as we can see Daniel Rain's uh, date and the time and if I present the token it's the same person as in me <clears throat> uh, when it push when you ac when access is granted it will attempt to push your first and surname to the LCD uh, with any other information below that such as the date and the time or if you're due to expire how many days you've got left if your first name surname with a space in between is 16 characters or less it will display your full name if you're if that's above 16 characters it will attempt to display just your first name but if your first name is also above 16 characters then it will just say access permitted um, <clears throat> so within IEVO um, if you present a finger that is not valid i.e. you know it's not registered at all um, then what will, by default what will happen is it won't send any Wigan data at all so obviously the screen won't change um, within Ref4 there is an option to connect to the unit and then there is an option to on the Ref4 to select denied Wigan and set a number that will be sent so just a brief overview within Net2 stroke BreeCS the ID number is in direct correlation of the Wigan number that gets sent so 65537 is ID1 within Net2 BreCS, 65538 is ID2, etc. So as long as you set the denied Wigand less, lower than 65537, then that person will not exist within BreCS on Net2 unless you manually add that, that token number. Um, and therefore an event will be sent and it will be access denied. So that's what I've done already set up. So if I now send present my finger um, a present sorry a finger to the reader that is not valid as you can see access was denied and access denied the user not found on the screen because date uh, Wigan data was sent to the net 2 ACU and obviously it's come through in this event as access denied you know token details not found uh, so therefore we do get the feedback on the screen so let's now concentrate on users that do exist um, in respect of the fingerprint but for some reason they cannot access the site because maybe they're barred, they're expired or they're out of hours. So if I edit my user within BreeCS and I change the expiry date to something in the past, let's just do 2015. If I now present the finger, uh, obviously it's valid in respect of IEVO but it won't let me through the turnstile, access denied, expired user. So this is just a good way, you know, because normally on a construction site, you'll present your finger. You are a valid user in the, uh, in, the in regards to biometrics, but obviously the access control solution is denying your access because you're barred or out of hours or expired. So that's a good way of getting the feedback. So now if we edit the user and I set, it, set the user back uh, within valid, hour, uh, valid uh, expiry date, shall I say, 
And now if I select the user as uh, no access, which is the same as issuing a red card or indeed barring the user, and I save that record, I present that finger again. And fingerprint accepted, access denied on the screen, barred user because the biometric, uh, sorry, the access control solution didn't let me through. Obviously works again with the token, the same thing. So if I edit my user again, uh, what I've done within Net2 is I've set the uh, working hours uh, for today between 9 o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock. So therefore, we are currently outside of those hours. That would, you know, that would normally be 7 to 7 or whatever the case may be, but I've just adjusted it for demonstration purposes. So now if I was to set my access level to those working hours and save my record, and I present my finger or token to the reader, <clears throat> again, fingerprints accepted, but access was denied out of hours. So let's put myself back uh, to all hours, all doors. So that covers the, the access denied events in respect of a fingerprint being accepted, but you're either barred, expired, or out of hours. So now let's um, edit my user again. And what I'll do this time is I'll select that my expiry date is the 30th of September uh, 2017, today is the 22nd. So now if I present my finger, I am valid, but I am due to expire in the next few days or so. So if I present my finger, access is granted, dangle reigns expiry eight days. So what happens if your expiry date is 30 days or less, every time you pass for the turnstile, access will be granted, but you'll get the notification that you ex expire in X amount of days. This will then allow you to see the site manager and present them with a, an updated ECS CSES card. Um, so they can obviously scan that card and update the expiry date of yourself. So now, <clears throat> if I was to change the within Net2, so let's go to the proximity settings and I want to change the keypad to, let's say, token plus pin. So I apply those settings. So now if I present the <clears throat> token and I enter an invalid code, then once the, once the data is sent, uh, access denied invalid pin. If I was to set um, a code that is valid, access granted, and again, we get the expiry of eight days time. We can also do the exit button, and you'll get notifications on screen if someone pushes an exit button. <clears throat> And you can also get um, notifications. So if you've got a keypad code set up, on, as some sites may do. So I'll just change that. And I've got a default code of 1234 just set up as an ACU code. So the ACU codes uh, are not assigned to users. So there's two different types. You've got pins and you've got codes. Pins get assigned to a user. That can be prox and pin or pin only. But codes are just set on the ACU itself. And they're, they're not, they don't correspond to any user, they're just a code to let someone through. So if I type that code in, access permitted, keypad code. So again, you'll get that notification. So I'll just change that back to token only. So now, so that's our access granted and access denied events. So access granted on biometric, but denied on the access control solution because we're expired, out of hours, or a barred user. <clears throat> and access granted, where it shows us hand, our name, if it can push it to the screen, with the date and the time in which we entered. And it will also tell us whether we're due to expiry if it's 30 days or less. Uh, exit button, notifications, uh, prox plus pin or pin only, and code, code only notifications. In addition to all this, if I was to run a fire roll call report, and the tick box is enabled for sending network instructions. As soon as I do so, as normal, all of the ACUs will open, uh, putting the turntiles into free spin. And as you can see on the screen, it will display fire, proceed to master point to let anyone know that's trying to enter the building if they don't hear the fire alarm ringing. Obviously, they can see that message on screen and they proceed to the master point rather than trying to enter the site. And as soon as we clear down the reports, everything reverts back to normal operation uh, all of the ACUs are cleared down, the turnstiles will relock, and the screen is reset. 
This also works if you've got a fire alarm or mushroom button connected to an input on an ACU. There's a little switch, I think it's just out of view, but if I click it, then you get the same effect. The Breeze CS fire roll call report is auto-generated. The turnstiles go into free spin and you get the information on screen. Resetting the fire alarm or right mushroom button will put the ACUs back into normal operation, but won't clear the message until I acknowledge it within the BreeCS software. That's why I be, uh, simply clicking the down button, and then that will revert everything back to normal operation. <clears throat> um, one other thing as well, so if we was to use the turnstile control to open a turnstile, um, either in or out direction, when I select a turnstile and I click in or out, then again we get access permitted network command. So anyone that's standing at the turnstile, the door can instantly see that the door, is, door or turnstile has been unlocked and they can proceed. In this demonstration, um, in this demonstration I've basically set, it, I set this LCD screen up to accept um, commands from any ACU as I'm using one ACU for the biometrics and one ACU for the proximity. Um, but obviously in a real life scenario there will be options and settings that you can set where you can specify where the LCD is in respect of the installation. So I can select the turnstile, uh, sorry the ACU and I can select which reader it is. So <clears throat> I may have one LCD just on the entry point so I select ACU ABC reader 1 or I may have one on the in and the out so I can have reader 1 and reader 2 or indeed I may just have one screen for both in and out so I can just have one screen select the ACU and say both the in and the out readers will push data to that screen. So this is obviously the idea behind that is that you don't want messages being displayed uh, at somewhere else when you're you know, presenting your finger at somewhere else. So the idea being is that you, it knows where you are and it only displays and pushes messages to the screen which you are at. Okay guys, I mean I think that pretty much covers everything. So we've got the Access granted events where it will say your name if it can, if not, just access permitted with the date and the time. If you're due to expire, it will push that information to it. Um, if you push an exit button, you get that notification. If it's prox um, only, or prox and pin, or code only, you'll get that notification too. If you try to open the turnstile using the turnstile control within BreeCS, you'll get that notification too. The fire roll call either through the software or through an input button will show that information as well. Um, if access is denied, it will also tell you why access is denied, i.e. no such finger, the user just doesn't exist, or the fingerprint does exist, but you're an expired user, or a barred user, or you're out of hours. Um, okay guys, thanks for watching. Cheers, bye bye.